Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the uh, Care Managers Inner Circle. Once again, my name is Jonathan and uh, we are here, of course, with Book Week. What a fantastic book week. Uh, and tonight we've got, uh, there's no, no, no surprises and certainly no, no great, uh, uh, you know, this, is, this is one guy who I think a lot of, a lot of people know and recognise. And it's an absolute delight to have and here he is. Let me bring him in. Big in, my friend. Good to see How you. How are you doing, buddy, lad? How are you? Good to see Mate, you. It is. I have missed you, big fella. I have oh, proper missed you. How I'll tell you, you what. I think we've missed. I think we've missed ourselves <laughs> as well. I think you know. You know what I mean. We've all we've missed absolutely everyone. But uh, it's not going to be long uh, now. We're going to be back at conferences together, back at events together. And I've threatened to come over to your place and you know get in the back of that rickshaw and really get a sweat on you. That would oh, be great. No, I tell you what, that would be that would be brilliant, and uh, oh. you know, it'd be, it'd be lovely, lovely to see you, mate. Your your room's proper posh. This is you know like, this is the proper. This is well, the, your, is the it, house is I live in. Is called the White backdrops. House. Yeah, the, well, the the house I live in is called the White House, and if you, if you look around here, <laughs> hold on, let me just in the corner. In the corner is a po um a thing of um a picture of. York Minster, done by my friend Alfie Joy. And yeah, yeah. The, there you go. And just to show how vulgar I am, it's oh. got the, <laughs> the biggest telly in the world. Oh. Biggest telly in the world. And we have a big wraparound sofa that seats 15. And oh, my, so much, this room is so, is so, so big and set up for people. <laughs> my wife actually calls it the Tyson Fury Suite. She says it's just so with a big massive like we've got a seventy <laughs> audience. Here. Seriously, I went to watch El the Elton John film Rocket Man at the pictures, and I didn't enjoy it. Then I came and watched it on the telly at home, and I did. And as I said to my wife, I obviously needed to see it on a big screen. Oh. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, the things I get away with. So this is this house we live in the centre of York. Um, we've been here twenty years, and yeah, yeah. we bought this house when we were both pretty young. And we we put in an offer for 70 grand, less than they wanted. And I just said, I'm a poet school teacher. I want to bring up my kids here. And they <laughs> said, yes. And I now live in this lovely house. And it's it's mint. And I just walk into town. We walk to the Minster, wherever we want to go. It, honestly, it's like every day is like a school trip living here. It's like a school <laughs> trip. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, I've come set up. I've come set up for an interview. I've got a big bottle of uh, zero sugar Fanta. That's wow, how rock and roll I, I am. I always knew you were posh, mate. That's oh, <laughs> mate, yeah, posh. Everybody said, "Oh, he's so posh, isn't he? So posh." Mate, it is. It is great to see you. And uh, what? So, what have you been doing? Because I mean, the last. I think the last we we were on stage. I, I think we were going back about two years ago now. I think it was the it was the Kerr show. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Kershaw. In fact, no, there was the there was the uh, the event in. Well, you picked me up from the uh, the train Essex, station. Was that? Yeah, it might, and and then we we ended up doing uh, a double a double gig. Um, that was where cool. you did. That was cool. that was that was healthcare care Brilliant. homes. It was for Helen Gidlow, and that was that was a that was a mint set. We had a great time, oh my. and it, it was it was beautiful. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it was. There, there was a think, couple of blocks from you know. Um, sort of halfway up north, and then properly up north. There we are, right down south, and we, we absolutely blew the doors off. It was great. We had it. Well, it, was, it was oh, it was, I really enjoyed that, mate. And uh, but that seems to be oh, god, there's a, an oh. age. So and, and, the rest of us, the, the rest of us, went into lockdown. Let me just get this right. So we all hunkered down. I mean, of course, some of us were hunkered down into into care homes. You hunkered down and then bashed out another book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I, do you know what? I suddenly realised that all the ink had dropped out of me, had dropped out of my diary. All of the ink had just dripped away. <laughs> We'd just done uh, Night to Remember at the uh, York Barbican. Yeah, and yeah. I had, I had a, a, a diary full of gigs. I had a diary full of band gigs. I had a diary full of talks. I had a diary full of everything. I was hosting events. I was doing award yeah. ceremonies. I had a year... <laughs> Like that, I ju you just couldn't believe. I thought this is going to be great. I can't wait. Absolute in the center of the racket. And then they basically said, and by the way, unfortunately, the world has now stopped. <laughs> now, I, I can, I've got to, I've got to be honest. I loved having an empty diary. Yeah, 
I've never had an empty diary. I've always been a year in advance. I started doing music when I was 18. And that means you book gigs for now and then for months ahead and then a year ahead and all this sort yeah, of yeah. I always thought if I ever gave up singing, when do I do it? Do I yeah. do it now and stop booking for then? Or but then I've got my bookings today. I don't I don't know how I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? The only the only real obvious way to get out of it is by doing a Tommy Cooper, where you basically one night you just fall back into the curtain. But yeah, yeah. not having the events in the diary for a while felt wonderful. Where yeah. you could just go out and listen to the birds and nobody nobody wanted me for anything. Everyone says, oh, oh, uh, oh, people are attention seekers and they want this and they want that. Do you know what? Nah, I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. I, seriously, I've never had peace and quiet in my entire life. Yeah. And I had peace, peace and quiet. So I had the garden all done up by our roadie with the band. It was a brilliant like craftsman with wood. And I said, all right, I've got no gigs for you. Do you fancy doing my garden? And we went, I need bother. And he did an amazing <laughs> job. And so it created an outdoor office for me to write a book. And yeah. so I did that, and I played a lot of guitar. I watched all of Spooks, all of Game of Thrones, all of Mad Men. Basically, I became a bit of a couch potato. Um, then for a while, I wasn't able to walk because I had sciatica and a trapped nerve. Oh, and I basically yeah. had like, a wooden leg. It was awful for about 10 months and I, I sort of did my own physio because as the older you get as you know right because you're not as young as that uh, hairpiece uh, suggests <laughs> and the older you get the more you understand your physical geography you you know where pain is and you can pain yeah, yeah. It again and stuff like that and so I did my own kind of physio and I thought, right, that isn't working. I'll try something else. That isn't working. And net, to the point where now I can be walking 20 mile a day. And I've dropped down to a 16 stone four, if you will, a geisha. So I'm, you do look great. Well, I'm feeling you good, man. Look I'm feeling, good. Yeah. feeling good. And it's just, do you know what? I got my values out there. Uh, during lockdown, I said to him, I said, I'm going to focus on my values here because my values are going to look after me. And they're going to look after me mates. And yeah. they're going to look after people who know me, right, and need me. And I did a lot of that. And I was on the phone to a lot of people, just sort of this little circle of trust sort of thing, just mates who needed you. Because there's there's two groups of people. There's the people who need help and the people who help. Yeah. And very rarely do the people who help need help, but occasionally we maybe do. And I don't know. I just really enjoyed connecting with people and talking to people. And I realized you don't really need to be in the same room with somebody to get that fix of yeah. their company. And I loved that fix. I really did. And so I'd go out for a walk and I'd talk to a few of my mates and I'd just catch up on people and see how they're getting on. And it was just a lovely thing. And we kept each other right. And there's, there were some people down the street um, the old bloke who lived down the street wasn't the old bloke that, who lived down the street. He was, he was George, and yeah. then he was George yeah. who got his pilot's license in 1968. Then he was George who nearly died in 1975. Then he was George who was married twice, and then he was George who then had uh, children in his 30s, and then he became a dad again when he was 54. Then he was George <laughs> who has two fantastic motorbikes that he still likes to ride at 81. And he was George who says, "Bah, goodness me, have you heard that new uh, that new that new single by such and such a band?" And you just think, George, you don't really listen to that. He went, "Oh yes, I listen to Radio Six all the time." And we got to know one another, and it just yeah. felt like going back in time. And I can't help thinking this lockdown thing wasn't that bad an idea. And if I had a magic wand, I would say this: we should have a week each year called lockdown week i think we should lock down for a week <laughs> every year because do you know it gives you a chance to to stop think and thank it gives you a chance to realize how fast you're going yeah, and yeah. i think that you know all these stupid things that are celebrated that people take days off for and this is and you just think you know i just can't help thinking let's have lockdown week I do, I do, I do, I do think people are more considerate uh, and more patient now. 
Maybe, well, maybe it's my rosy glasses that I, I, I well, you maybe that. well, the thing is, you know, the the pandemic of stupidity and ignorance is still out there. Don't yeah. you know? <laughs> and selfishness and me, 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 shall I just get mine first? Thank you. But I think there's been, I think people have realised how little they need. I yeah. certainly realise that. And you realise that the little things are the big things. I, I know it sounds silly, but on a, for every Friday night, because I don't think anybody did a long lockdown. We did it in little sections, right? If somebody had said to us, you know, back in May 2020, oh, by the way, the world ain't going to be right for another 18 months. <laughs> I think people have been jumping like lemmings off, off the cliff, but we weren't because yeah. we did it like a week at a time, a fortnight at a time or whatever. And on a Friday night, me and the kids, we used to sit and watch Gogglebox, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. And, I love and, it. And you know what? Gogglebox just was like a little flagpole every week that went, we've got through another week. And then how shall we reward ourselves? And then that would be Saturday night where you get a big takeaway and you say, right, it was chosen takeaways tonight. And that's what it would be. And that just got us. And I'll tell you now, time was going quick because some weeks I noticed I had about three Saturdays. Everything just kept going fast. The world kept spinning. Yeah. And, you know, people say when, <laughs> you know, time flies when you're having fun, but time was flying when we were doing now. It was yeah. going quickly. So, yeah, and then what I did is I went in the garden and I started writing a book. I started writing a couple that, of stories. Is that writing a book? <laughs> yeah, as you do. Do you know what? I've got one. So there's two of them that have been sold to somebody. Um, <laughs> No, so I started writing. Hey, this is right. This is right. Have you seen how much this guy written, wrote in mine? I tell you what, can, can you hold that up close? No, you read it because I tell you what, I meant every no, right? No, you read it because I can't. Cause I'm, you read that because I meant every so, single Jonathan, word. thank you for your invaluable work you've done with all the Inner Circle members, the unique way uh, you run your homes. Uh, you're a fantastic UDK, UDK player and singer. Uh, <laughs> you've got but a dreadful singer. Big Ian Donny. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, fella. During lockdown, That's lovely. Well, when, yeah. during lockdown, when I saw the stuff you were doing, I thought, well, that's a good use of him. That's a great use of him. And it's, a, you know, it is. It's a case of to use a, a military thing, but cometh the hour, you know. And there you yeah, were. You, yeah. you were a top man. And I thought it was beautiful, um, the things that you were doing. And as I say, as I said earlier, there are those who need help and those that have been put here to help. And you were put here to help. And a lot of people really benefited from that help. And I think many people will remember how we behaved during this time. And yeah. so the people who behaved selfishly, had some short-term gains, but they're going to have some long-term losses. But guys who, you know, got into the doghouse with their wives because they were doing these broadcasts every night and stuff like that. <laughs> right? people, won't, people won't forget that. And I, 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 think, I think it's stopped. Off. And I think people need to look at another way and think, you know, that's another hour of pace she's had. So that's got to be a good thing. That's right, so, that's... so these stories, I started writing these stories for this pocket full of kindness. And... Because there's so back. many of them. I mean, they're so are, and hard. What, and they're all they're all things that have happened to me. They're all things that have happened to me and my yeah. mates. And I think anyone's ever seen story. this? It's just like just little stories. Just beautiful little stories. There's a lot of words I in mean, here, mate. There is. Yeah, I, I use some of them more than once, though. I, I've I've found that you can use them more than once. Some of them. Um, but what we did, I, I made sure it's got pictures. Pictures on every sort of page. That's and, that's me. Yeah. And and these are, you know, they're just a lovely thing because I thought, well, when you're a kid, you like you like pictures in books. Why would you take them out? So I did that. And each story is about how an act of kindness or how somebody was by giving you their time or their belief or whatever has transformed your life. And I've had loads of people do this for me. Yeah. I've had loads of people who've seen some of it in me, and that's why I'm having the the life that some consider a myth now, because it's it's ace. It. You know, a lot of the things I dreamt of doing as a kid, I do. This Sunday, I'm playing with my band at York Balloon Fiesta. I'm probably <coughs> going to do about 10,000 people on Sunday night. 10,000 really? people. So it's it's ridiculous. 
and all the stuff I do, and I'm, I make films, and I meet cool people, and I, it's just great. And so the pocket full of kindness thing, I started writing once. I wrote the first story I wrote was a story about Sir Bobby Robson and my dad. Yeah, and I sent it to my mate Charles Hutchison, who was a journalist in New York, brilliant journalist and arts critic guy. And I sent it to him because I thought it would entertain him. And he sent us back. He said, wow, that's beautiful. And he says, you have scant regard for punctuation and grammar. I went, correct. <laughs> and I said, it's true. Because the thing is, I've been writing all the time for me. So I was a maths teacher. I wasn't, write, I wasn't doing English. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I was doing learning disabilities, which is the really basic stuff of you building b- blocks of uh, education. But I certainly wasn't doing using semicolons. Goodness me. No, that's, so, that's... so he edited it. And then I said, right, I'm going to send you another story. So I wrote another story. <laughs> and then I wrote another story. And he came back and he went, God, these are great. These are great. And he went, how many of these have you got? I said, I have no idea. I just come in my garden. I just sort of put some music going. I just write. And he went, keep writing them. Let's turn this into a book. I'll edit really? this book for now. Wow. Now. And so I think I did about 70 stories or something like that. Now, since then, this book has been given to just about everybody. Like in the world yeah. of care, loads of people have bought it for all of their team. This yeah. week, uh, an organization <laughs> called CAHSC in Cornwall, Beverly Footed and a wonderful team, She's given out 500 copies of this book. To well, I saw your video, your brilliant, brilliant video. It was like a time-lapse video mm. of you in your 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 desk uh, with yeah. them slowly stacking up. It was just yeah. brilliant. <laughs> well, the thing is, that was it. So 500 books, and that's a, that's a decent order. But I got, I got others where people say, we'd like 1,000 for all of our employees in this company, oh. an engineering company. Then somebody else said, right, we want oh, to take really? these to and we and i've had them also they're like bespoke so they have like logos on and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. i've had i've had care companies i've had building companies savista which is avnish goyal's building company there they got a load they've got a couple of hundred all this sort of thing and people were getting them legal companies and then you know organizations you know charities were doing it and then they wanted to spread the word um the one of the stories featured in the the, uh, the book is about the Jordan legacy, which is about a gentleman called Steve Phillip who lost his son to suicide and set up this yeah. anti-suicide prevention thing. And I have to say, it's gone daft. And I yeah. don't even remember writing it. I honestly believe yeah, yeah. it was given to us. It was my past helping me present and my yeah, future. Yeah. And it, it, was the only, it, all, it all came about because normally my head is busy doing loads of things. It's like a Swiss army knife pulling the blades all the time, looking for the fork <laughs> and the spoon and the nail file and all that sort of thing. Because I've never been particularly good at one thing. I've been pretty all right at a lot of things. And yeah. suddenly I had the time that thought, do you know what? Do us a favor, Bonnie Land. Do one thing half decent. So I put this book together and I wrote it in no time. No time. When we get on to one of the other books, I'm going to tell you all about I mean, you go on. So, so, how, so how long did it take you? How long did it I, take you? Right. I started that in March, right? And I just found it really easy. Like, yeah, yeah. really easy. And I just wrote down, I just thought, right, blah, blah, blah. And I start writing a story. And then when it bores me, right, I jump off it and I start writing another. And it's kind of like, it's really odd. I don't write them as that. And they go back and I make them better, make them better, make, make them better, better. So by the time he gets to edit them, they've kind of been edited by me. Yeah. So he has to do a sort of finer edit than that, <laughs> apart, from, apart from the, the punctuation with the K. <laughs> um, so this, I started <clears throat> in the April. This was published in the August. And it's a big okay. book. It's a big book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and- and you were saying, you were saying, you know, you, you haven't gone, you haven't been seduced by Amazon, you haven't been seduced no. by the publishing houses. So no. how, how would you, how would you go about? Do you just right. find someone to publish it? Right. One of my mates, who was a businessman. He says, right, do us a favor, get all those orders on Amazon. You'll be a bestseller on Amazon, and you'll have all of that, and then that'll get you loads more sales, loads more sales, because you'll yeah. be a best-selling thing. Do you know what? I don't know anybody on LinkedIn who isn't a best-selling author on Amazon. Right, can't be honest. I don't need that vanity. I don't yeah, need. Yeah. 
So I published a book with a publisher once, and that was a nice idea. And it worked out all right for a while. It's yeah, been yeah. used for Skeleton Key, and I'll get to it later. But now that book is no longer in the publisher's hands, and it's in my hands. And that means if I want to give that book away, I can give that book away. Okay, yeah. And if I want to sell that book, I can sell that book, and I make all the money off it. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's all me that went into it, so it's all me that gets out of it. So these people say, oh, I've got to publish it with so-and-so, with so-and-so, with so-and-so. Great. Well done. But do you know what? They, they have no interest in you. They have no care in you, right? <laughs> All they're interested in is the coin, right? They're not interested in anything else. So what happens is I've done these books, and it's me and my mate Chris the Printer. And I'll get to Chris the Printer. Ask me later because he is a very special man. So I've got one designer. Yeah, yeah. I've got my editor, Charles, right? And then I've got my printer. And that's it. Does my distribution. He does me different covers. He does all manner of stuff. I've been oh, on to him. The guy's an absolute diamond, and he's got a printing uh, set up just out about two miles from my house, and it's yeah. him uh, and, <clears> a dog <throat> and a dog in the print shop. <laughs> and during lockdown, I kept him very busy. Thousands of books got printed, and he's he's had to buy some new gear and stuff like. That. He's been yeah. made in heaven. And that's all you need. All you need is a handful of diamonds in your team. And you'll know this. You'll know this in care. You'll know this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you don't need all the guys knowing you and everything. Is like you need a handful of diamonds. And that handful yeah, of diamonds yeah. makes everything else happen. And that's what I've got in my life. I've got a handful of diamonds. And that's... I mean, and the other, the other books, you know, you know, you did mention the missing piece, you know, because they... Yeah, they're they're also equally well known. I know that this one has been the the, the latest one, but you know, I mean, did so did no? Your first one was uh, the missing piece, wasn't it? No, first one was Dear Dementia. I I which came about. Everyone says, oh, there must have been a really good reason for that, that real heartfelt reason for you to write that. And I went, yes, it got to January, and I'd just really become self-employed, and I suddenly realised <laughs> I haven't booked any work in for January, um, and and so I need work. So I thought, right, what do I do? And then I'd, I'd done these things on Twitter. Uh, one of my friends, Meg Burton, told me to get on Twitter. I went, that's a stupid idea. I got on Twitter, and it, it's gone daft for care of work for me. Yeah. And, and so I started writing these things on Twitter. Dear Dementia, Nana forgets, so I remember. And I wrote these little things to Dementia every day. Dear Dementia, I would write different things and say, Dear Dementia, Weetabix Monday, Weetabix Tuesday, Weetabix Wednesday, Weetabix Thursday, Weetabix every bloody day. Yeah. Is Weetabix a cure for you? I wish I'd never told them I liked Weetabix. Oh, and that's no, where yeah, yeah. they just never ask. They just think, oh, she likes Weetabix. She likes it. Yeah. And never asks on another day. You know, and our tastes change. And then, so all these things. And I made this, and so it was the same size as a Mr. Man book. I'm, I'm having to show you this because I don't have one. I haven't got one in the house. <laughs> a bit, a, a, seriously, I haven't, I haven't got one in the house. Um, me, actually, actually, me, Chris, my printer was going to drop one off. Hold on. Do you know what? I'm going to check to see if he's dropped one off. Wait there. <laughs> wait there. He said he's dropped one off. I said, I haven't got one out. <laughs> so there you go, folks. <laughs> we were interviewing Ian this evening. Um, but it uh, so tonight for those of you who just jo joined us, we, we are <laughs> we, are, we are here in the White live. House. We are here live. Wait, wait, he brought a box. He's brought a box. Hold on, let's see what's in the box. He said he. So I said just leave it in the pot. So he did. Hold on, let's see what we got. Oh, right. We're, we're wrapping this up in five minutes. Ian. All right. right. <coughs> so there was what. There's one of my bespoke. Uh, Dear Dementors, and these are the oh, right, okay. so same size of Mr. Man book, right? And it's got a, a whatchamacallit inside, uh, a forward, done by Angela Rippon, if you will. Oh, and Angela Rippon was at the launch of the book right. in 1994, my birthday, June the 16th, and she's a big supporter of this, and she's used this book all of And the whole idea is it's a simple picture book. Yeah, 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 with yeah. The word, with with a few words on each page, and three hospitals have had wards 
designed using these images right and one of them has won awards and everything and this book is is on the books on prescription read well list yeah right by the alzheimer's society 25 books in the world you can go to a doctor you can be prescribed to read that book isn't that crazy that's <laughs> it's in every library and it's been um translated into welsh <laughs> It's in every Welsh library. <laughs> I just got a phone call one day when I was doing, I'd done the home care, uh, wait, or Cymru, um, oh, yeah. which was amazing. <clears throat> Beautiful people in Wales. See, they can make things happen in Wales, right? In the, in the, in, um, in England, there's loads and loads of committees for this. In Wales, there's 10 people in a room and they just say, should we do this? And they go, yes. And that's how it works. <laughs> and that's where we're getting it all wrong in this country. So we've got this. And the whole idea of this of this um, cover is, if you look, it's based on Hilda Ogden's ducks that yeah, used to be oh on yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah. We call it a mural. And it just goes to show that your ducks aren't exactly in a row. And it says, Dear Dementia, and it's using like Scrabble letters. And one of the letters is missing. One of the E's is missing. But it says, do you know, the, um, the message is, if you read around it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see yeah. what it says. So do us a, it, it says, do us a favor, you know, take the time, take the time to, to find out about us. And so that little book, I'm not joking you, has gone to 24 different countries. Was it? Yeah. It sold loads, and I never made a lot of money out of it, out of the publishing thing, but it's now back mine. But it doesn't matter because it's been a skeleton key to yeah. every door I've been through since. And without that little book, I wouldn't have written the missing piece and I wouldn't have written a pocket full of kindness and I probably wouldn't have met you. Yeah, and, it's, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I get the gigs that I get based on my previous work because, you know, neither of us are speakers. We're doers who yeah, then yeah. go and talk about it. Yeah, right? Yeah. There's plenty of speakers in the world. Lots of, uh, what do you call them? Kubler Ross guys. Kubler Rosses, as I call them. The ones that have got no idea but all the confidence. And uh, there's too many Kobler Rosses in the world of t in the world of uh, speaking, I reckon. So we're both doers, and then we go out and talk about it and help other people do stuff. And as I say, Dear Dementia was. <coughs> an so I'd like to give something away. Ooh! <laughs> right. Right. What I've got is this: I have got massive, full. There must be a. Will there be a three? No, they'll be probably bigger than a three. They're, they're really big, and they're all of the book in massive print form that could be used as posters, that could be put in frames, oh, yeah. whatever. And if anybody wants them, get in touch with Jonathan, okay? He'll come up with some way to, to sort of be of use to you, whatever. Well, and I've well, got can they, they, can they contact you on your website? They can. Tell them to get in touch, and they can have some of them, or they hey, can have all that out. Because can I be honest? They're just under my... They're just under one of my units in the uh, in my in my music room, and you know hey, what? Put some guitar effects pedals underneath. Look, look, I've got. There's a couple of comments here, so we've got. Uh, so Facebook user, that's because they're coming in through the right, inner well, circle. I tell you what. I tell you fantastic. What, I'm Welsh. All right, well, I'm going to tell you this. Right, the welcome I got in Wales was phenomenal. It was right up there with when I used to tour Northern Ireland with my band. And I turned up with a name like Donaghy. And I sang like Van Morrison. I tell you what, you soon get treated well in Northern Ireland as well. So, yes, um, you know, it would be great. So if uh, people would like any of those things, I've got them and I can get them posted out. And you can stick them in frames and stuff. And that would look really cool. That'd really nice. cool. And really yeah. useful. And, th and they're all there. They're designed to either educate, motivate, amuse, or rip your heart out. Because if yeah. I don't make you laugh or I don't make you cry, I'm never going to make you think. Yeah. And that's what all these books have as a common th common theme. There's humour in them. There's emotion. It's a tightrope. You know, tragedy and comedy share such similar borders. And let's be right here. You know, we cry when we laugh and we cry when we're sad. So it's all got to be linked up together. And that's, I don't know, that's what I do. I just seem to hook up. Me, me, <laughs> in, is to hook up with people's emotions and to get under people's skin and to make them want to make things better yeah I, good. you know and by championing the stuff that's good and by calling out the stuff that's rubbish and there's some rubbish stuff out there but there's a lot of good stuff that people don't yeah. hear about. and so 
And that, so that's what we do. So that's where Dear Dementia came about. And as I say, the whole of this book, the whole of this book, and it features me, mate, Roy, there, that we, uh, we took uh, yeah. the county. And he's, in, yeah. he's the last thing in the new thing. So I did a new edition of that. And uh, as I say, with a forward by um, Dr. Trevor Jarvis, who was given British Empire Medal, and then uh, an introduction by Angela Rippon. And that's available on my me, uh, on me website. And as I say, same size as Mr. Man book, deliberately. Because when you picked up a Mr. Man book, it felt like an old friend. And it, yeah, had, a yeah. to it, it had a reason to it. And all the people in this book are real. I've got people like my <laughs> neighbours, right? I've got my dad. I've got, you know. I know, got, we love you, dad. <laughs> oh, I've got all manner of stuff. So, yeah, so it's it's all good. So that was my first book, and that was 1994. And as I say, uh, at Christmas, one company there asked for 300 of those for all of their employees because they said Brilliant. they weren't sure how amazing they are. So they did a, I did a completely bespoke version. And that's where I get a lot of my sales, from doing bespoke versions. I don't just give them same old, same old, same old. Uh, with them, they even chose to add some different pages of other things I'd said and remove a couple of other bits. And so that's what I did. I trimmed right. the book. I made it exactly for well, that. <laughs> Well, look, Ian, um, I know you're at the uh, you're coming to the care show. I am I've got, on, the, you, on the 13th, uh, 13th and 14th of October. I am so that'd be that'd be great to great to see you. Know, do you want to know? Go on, I'm gonna do something all about <laughs> kindness for that. I'm gonna do it, but I've also got something up my sleeve <laughs> that. that will blow people's minds and it's going to be beautiful like yeah. i mean proper beautiful and it would still be beautiful with your involvement but it's going to be beautiful i can't say anymore don't don't because <laughs> i'm rubbish keeping secrets i'm rubbish keeping secrets but it will be gorgeous <laughs> so people will talk about it for some time and it will be so so beautiful well, no no you know you mean it will be unbelievable and, no, and not be watching, beautiful because of me but it'll be beautiful because of some people and you know i'll be i'll be bringing uh you know some interesting little clips of people because i always like to bring real people on yeah, like yeah. films and stuff like that because why should i tell the stories when i've got them and yeah, got them on a big screen and say, I tell you what, listen to George. Yeah. And and that's why the the films took off that way. Because <laughs> people used to, they, I started making films for a laugh, uh, just to use at conferences. And then someone said, who makes your films? I went, well, me. And they went, Gee, yeah, oh, we like them. And I went, can you, can you do this? Can you do one about this? Can you do one about that? Can you do one? So I've done, fil you know, films with think, people like Barry McGuigan. You know, one of my childhood heroes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and about you know having the right people in your corner when you've got dementia and stuff. And I'm, as I say, making a film at the moment for the uh, for the wonderful Joe Bonser. Um, yeah, yeah. Making a like a like she's got this. She came to me with an idea, and she said, "You know, my mum had dementia, and I want to make a film that's kind of like a a special tribute to her, and to make sure that people get things right in future." Yeah. And so we sat down. And I said, what do you think about these ideas? And she went, oh, yeah, we like that. We like that. So mm -hmm. I'm spending all this week um, doing some pretty crazy things that's going to be at um, a dementia conference in mid-September uh, at the NEC. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm, I'm there on the is it 15th and 16th. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not going to go and speak. I am actually going to um, be working with Joe and Joe's going to be doing speaking that day. Yeah, I just think really. it's a good use of me. And <laughs> it will certainly be a good use of Joe. And we'll be uh, debuting that film, and it features some absolutely fantastic people. And when you just watch it, you're just going to go, that's exactly what it's about. Yeah, and yeah. It's, all about, it's all about the power of food and about the power of mealtimes and togetherness and socialisation and... I, I cannot wait. I, I, I've got so I've got it dancing around in my head at the moment. <laughs> uh, you know, which ain't great, but it's it's wonderful. I spent today with a gardening group in York talking to them, um, and so that was that was wonderful. And so yeah, really, really, really exciting for that. And so and I can't wait to see you back at conferences again. <laughs> be... Well, mate, we could talk all night, so I've got to shut you up at some point. 
Go on. <laughs> but mate, lovely seeing you. Absolutely lovely seeing Hold you. Hold on. Hold it. Don't give me lovely seeing you. I've got to tell you about this one. This <laughs> one, this one is important. Okay. Now this one's uh, being turned into a play at Joseph Roundtree's Theatre. Oh yeah, go on. New York in January. And we've got Mark Addy, the full Monty and Game of Thrones actor, narrating it. Okay. Uh, he's doing that uh, as a favour, bless him. And he liked the book. This book is for anyone who's ever lost anybody. Yeah. For anyone who thinks it's just them. For anyone who's walking around planet Earth today thinking, nobody else gets me. Anyone who's just in that crowd of people and thinks, everybody else is better at this. I'm worse at this than anybody. For anyone who's ever lost anybody. This is a book of short stories that all last about a cup of tea each of how people have survived losing people and yeah. how to be a better friend. And this, pocket full of kindness, easy to write. I don't even remember writing it. It just wrote itself. I just typed. It was a joy to write. It was easy. Lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely. This nearly cost me my wife. This was three years, a labour of love. I took it on three three beach holidays. Ooh. So while she was reading 50 shades of grey and 50 shades of blue or whatever it was, right, I was there with notepads on the beach, going out for a swim in the sea, coming up with an idea, running in, writing it down, then going out to sea again. This took three years. And wow. it got to the I put it down, I threw it down a few times. And then I said, I've got to finish it. I've got to finish it. In the final month, I finished it. And this came about, I got I got ripped off by a printer for this. Yeah. And this is why my relationship with my printer now is amazing. I saw a printer on the internet, because you Google it and you don't, you know, self-published books, printer, blah, 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 blah. You get one, lovely, fancy website, lovely. And he says, right, pays up front and we'll do the 500 books at this price. I went, that's unbelievable. Get in. I love that. And he was lovely, sounded lovely on the phone. I said, yeah. when are they ready? They're ready next Monday. They never arrived next Monday. You ring up again. They'll be there next Monday. They weren't there next Monday. You then go through to a complaints department, which turns out to be the same blog putting on a different voice. <laughs> it turns out this company have been on Watchdog and Rogue ah. Traders more <clears throat> more than Anne Robinson. This company, what they do is they go bankrupt and then they come back with the similar web website, but with a different name, with a different director who is the person's daughter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they just rip you off enough so that you don't send round the boys. But if you did send round the boys, you know that they've got CCTV everywhere, right? Yeah. And you'll be the person who will get into bother. Um, they've got they're appalling. So anyway, I got told to the final Monday, we were doing the book launch on the Friday, right, in a pub in York. It was going yeah. to be round. I get a phone call. They went, oh, right, it's Thursday. So I went, right, okay. So I had the book launch at the Black Swan in York. Beautiful, oldest pub in York or whatever. No books Thursday night. They said, oh, it's coming on recorded delivery Friday oh. morning. Friday morning. 10 past eight and then half past eight and then I rang them up and he went, Oh no, we lied to you. Oh. Now the problem is I was so engulfed in writing a book about helping people. I never thought about any of the street wiseness that I might use in the rest of my life. Cause I was too busy thinking I was doing a nice thing. Yeah. And I suddenly thought, I felt like Pinocchio surrounded by foxes. I thought, how soft am I? I've got a book launch tonight. I ain't got no books. I'm a pub with no beer. I'm an embarrassment. And I got onto my mates who were printers. I said, can you print books? And they went, no, we print posters. Can you print books? No, we do T-shirts. And I said, do you know anyone who prints books? He went, there's a guy called Chris Mercer um, at York uh, Printer Services there over in, uh, over in uh, Elvington. Give him a call. I rang him up. I said, right, um, do you print books? He went, yeah, loads. <laughs> I said, um, I'd like some brick books printing, please. He went, how many do you want? I said, well, pff, I could do with that now. 150, 100, whatever. 
He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you want them for? I went, um, seven o'clock tonight. And he like spat his tea out, right? And he just went, you are having that. He says, I'm off on my holidays tomorrow. He says, I've just come in just up the, the you know, just up the place. Yeah. Uh, the fact just to make sure it's right. for when I come back and I said, and I got talking and he heard my voice and he went, are you the bloke who does Night to Remember at the Barbican? Yeah. And I went, yeah. He says, you're, you're on Radio York a lot. He says, um, um, I list, I've listened to your interviews and stuff. You do some nice things in, in town. And he says, yeah, sing, aren't you? I went, aye. And he went, he went all quiet. I said, what, are you all right, mate? And he goes, how many do you need? I went, 100? And he went, for when? I said, 7 o'clock tonight, Black Swan. He went, he says, quickest I've ever turned around a book in about three days, four days. I said, so what are you saying? He says, I said, can you do it? He went, I'll tell you at 10 to 7 tonight. <laughs> right? What he did was this. What he did. I then got the PDF from my designer to him. Right, this is at like ten past nine, right? And then he rings me back. He says, "Mate, I don't have any proper book paper. I've run it down till I'm on my holidays. I've got yeah. some magazine paper." So the first copy of of the missing piece has yeah. like shiny paper. Yeah, yeah. It's like like magazine sort of thing, but it worked really quite well. Anyway, he turns up the pub. They moved all the furniture out of the Black Swan because it's a really small pub. And they had everybody sat on the floor for my book launch. And this guy turns up. Well, of course, he is all my intro to my book launch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the story, is my intro. And the story was all about how people come to save you. And some people come to save you. when If you've had somebody die in your family or had one of your friends die, some of the people who have been your best mates can become an overnight mess and be yeah. useless. And do you know what? Be fair weathered and be no good when the, the storms come. And then somebody can come from nowhere in your life and they can become a bit of a saviour and really, really look after you and all this sort of thing. And this guy did this. He never knew me. He just heard me on the radio and thought I sounded like, you sound like a canny bloke to me. And I thought, well, <laughs> And so he turned up with these boxes, and boxes, and this is so funny. So everyone was getting a book. So he turns up with this box, and he, he then opens the box, like I've opened the box there. And basically, here they are, these books, and they all come off. And they they smell like hot scones. They're like, <laughs> you know when people say the term, hot off the press? They were warm. When have you ever picked up a warm book? Yeah, yeah. And, and so everybody's going like that, and they're going... And they went, yeah, careful you don't get ink on your face, mate. And and so everybody got one. And that is why Amazon, I'm not bothered for. That's why publishers can go to hell for me. Because I've got a mate who's, and he's become a mate, yeah. who'll run through brick walls for me. And nothing's too much bother. And I say, can you print a thousand for next, next week? He went, yeah, cost can. Where's it going? Oh, it's going so and so. And another thing that people have mentioned, and if you pick up your book there, right, yeah, your yeah. pocket of kindness, it's a nice little shape. It's a different shape to it normal. Is, yeah, it it's just a different fits in different different shape. Shape. Yeah. yeah. It fits in a bag, and the illustrations, everything about it is quality. Now he said you could get you could get it printed cheaper elsewhere. And I went, yeah. I don't want it printed elsewhere. I don't want yeah. it printed cheaper. I want it printed at that price, right, by a top man who really, really cares. And that's all that we need to do. So I'm, I was, I've been talking about books, but what, I'll, what the underwriting message of all this is, surround yourself with people who will push you and surround yourself with people who want the best for you and really give a damn about you. Yeah. And then if you give a damn about them, and if you care for them and if you look after one another and you bring out the best in one another, that's life sorted. Yeah. And that's all we need. So I, it is such a buzz talking to 
my my mate without a ukulele in his hand. That's the problem. <laughs> Either you don't have it. And by the way, if you think my house looks nice, who the hell has neon lights in their own home? <laughs> neon lights in his own home. Look at that. Timmy Mallet never even had uh, neon lights on whack a day. Goodness. It's like, you know, it's like chill, Saturday morning children's telly. So <laughs> I tell you what, Jonathan, I'll just say this, mate. The work you've done over lockdown, you've been a diamond in a world full of coal. Uh, when, the world was stopped, when the world was stopped, you tried to keep it spinning and you were giving it a good old try. And I know that there were people who really needed you and were nearly going to go under. And I tell you what, they didn't. And it's pretty cool to be a life preserver. And yeah. I tell you what, mate, you did some you did some great stuff. You're going to carry on doing great stuff. And it's just really pretty. Now, we could have recorded this and we could have trimmed it all down, but I thought, no, sod it, let's make him work. <laughs> let's make him work. You know, I, I actually thought, let's give his missus some peace. Do you know what I mean? So I've given her 45 minutes of peace. You did well, mate, actually. <laughs> you know, so that's it. So I tell you what, I was about, I was about to say this. I'll see you in September. I'll Great. see you in October, right? And at some point, I'll bob across and see you over there, Bonnie Lad, because uh, you run an interesting, exciting, you do I'll things. Say, it, it'd be great to see you. Get you in the, oh, in man, the back, I'd, back of the rickshaw. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd love, to, I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to see you sweat there, sweat running down your back that day. I'll tell you. So, absolute yeah. pleasure, Bonnie Lad, and I will see you very soon. Oh, by the way, uh, all these books. So that's Dear Dementia. Hold on, I'll put it there. Dear Dementia, um, the missing piece. <laughs> And a pocket full of kindness are all available from bigian.co.uk. And another thing, if you want a batch of them, you can have them with your logo, uh, your company logo, bespoke on them. Just send me an email and we can get them done. And you can get them done at no extra cost. No extra that's really, cost. That's I really can, nice of you. I can sort that out. Well, no, I, can, I love the way I say I can sort. I, I do now. I hand it over to Chris. The printer. <laughs> I, just, I just send him a logo. I said, "Do us a favour, sort them out, Chris." Willis. That's because you. That's because you pay him extra now, mate. I, I pay, well, you know I'll you could have got it cheaper. I could have gone cheaper, but he's top draw. He's top draw. <laughs> so, as I say, everything's available. Wait, well, on there. And uh, if you want, uh, if you want an entertaining speaker anytime, uh, and you, you know, you can get me in. But if you haven't got the budget for that, give Jonathan a ring. <laughs> give Jonathan a ring. If you want somebody a bit smaller. <laughs> Which way? That's like, I point that way to get to him, fella. All the best. You take it steady, yeah, mate. Lovely seeing you. I'm just going to bring hey. you out into, into the into the green room briefly, ladies and gentlemen. What a fantastic night! He's a real good mate. We absolutely adore him. Um, these things are absolutely bloody diamonds. They're the best reads. Uh, I love it. I love it. And uh, and we'll we'll see you very soon at time of the care dementia show at the uh, the care show later on in October. Uh, be good. Be kind to each other. And we'll see you very.